Welcome, Tom, to Metalidium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about my trip to con, your career. You are you are a well-known musician around the world in the stream metal world. So we can start with I think we're asking by a common question. So how has Van D been the band during the last what during the last during the last nine years? Because the album didn't release uh, now a new album. You are just, still have tours presentation. Now you are do now you will do a tour in Mexico. Well, how can you ask that? Nine years is a very long time. Yes. There's been a million things that have taken place in the last nine years. Uh, it's very difficult to, to summarize that in one interview. Um, but in general, um, I'm very lucky to be part of a very stable band, a very professional band, Trypticon. Um, a band who can actually focus on music, unlike Celtic Frost, who suffered a lot of personal problems, unfortunately. And I'm also very lucky to be part of a side project called Triumph of Death, which plays uh, Hellhammer's music around the world. Uh, so I feel very, very privileged. And of course, I have to thank for this. Uh, uh, I have to thank the audiences for this. They are the ones that make this possible for me. And I'm, I'm infinitely grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all the aspects when I'm talking about relating to the nine years, uh, well, there is a lot of time that the Retrificon didn't release a new album. So I and also I, I I read some I, I read some articles and interviews that the that you said that the the album is done, but it's still waiting. We don't know why. So why decide to do what to do, well, perhaps with this new album that is recorded or perhaps is already is already written. So perhaps. Perhaps we will do another kind of things to to this new album because nine years is a long way to to wait for an album with Tripticon. Well, actually, the last Tripticon album was released in two thousand twenty twenty. Oh, well, and yeah, we're working on yes. So we're working on the fourth Tripticon Tripticon album right now, and uh, I never ever in any interview said that the album is done. Mm -hmm. I said, we are working on it and I have music for it and so do the other band members. And right now, as we don't play any concerts right now, after uh, spending the, the, the previous months of the year playing concerts all over the globe, right now we're actually taking time to work as a band on the album. And we'll also take some time in the new year to finish the album. And it will certainly be released next year, but it's it's not finished by far we are in the process of creating it mm, okay for those of us who are the fans of the extreme music for many years and always i i remember when i hear for the for the first time your your products or your music since hellhammer now then celtic frost there are always you all will be a reference into the extreme metal world for many bands around the world that's normal so in this aspect when you started this path for more than 40 years ago did you believe that your legacy in all aspects uh, of the world was going to the last? Or, or what would you say the next generation to this? Was who take Tom G. Warrior as a reference in their way of thinking and making music? No, of course I didn't think of any of this. Um, I didn't know that I would have a legacy. I didn't know if I would even become a musician. I was like every other young man who dreams of becoming a musician it was it was a dream of mine but there was no guarantee by far and it was very difficult um to get a record deal with hellhammer because at the time people didn't really like that kind of music there was no extreme metal scene at the time so we found it extremely challenging to get a, even a record deal and what you're referring to is basically the result of a long path that took 40 years. Yeah. Uh, the young Tom had no idea that I would last that long. I didn't know. Even when we did the first few EPs and albums, I, I was always under the impression, okay, maybe I can do an album or two, but then that's oh, it's over. And I'm the, I'm the one who's most surprised that I'm still here after 40 years. And there again, I have to say, this is because of the audiences. Uh, the people who listen to my music have made this possible. It's not. It's not really me. Uh, they are giving me a chance by by listening to my music, by coming to my concerts, 
And because I was a nobody and because we found it very difficult to get even a record deal, this is why I know how much this is worth and how how much I'm, I'm privileged to have this audience who is with me. And I'm extremely grateful for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, it's a curious thing about this, about your country, Switzerland, is that the one well, Hellhammer, Celtic Frost, and now Driftigo are, I think, well, we know that these are huge bands in the world, influence a lot of bands. But since since you, and uh, I think we related this aspect, no other band in Switzerland uh, has other other um, other big band since the eighties or nineties or two thousands. So you are. You are founded the found you, know, you found the foundations of the extreme metal war around the world. So why all why never why, why will never see a new band that with with the same with the same one with the same pop or, or opulous band in the world with like Celtic Frost, Hellhammer, or other extreme metal band from Switzerland? I think one of the problems is that. Switzerland is a very wealthy country and most people have regular jobs, maybe with banks, with insurance companies, whatever, and they make good money and there's no need for them to risk, to risk becoming a musician, to risk being poor, to risk fighting for a dream. Um, a lot of people think we are very fortunate to live in Switzerland because the country is very wealthy, but this is only if you are a capitalist, if you think, if you believe in money. If you, if you are an artist, you see that people being wealthy become very lazy. Um, you are much more creative when you are hungry, when you are desperate, when you are suffering. That's really what fosters true art. When you have something to say, when you have something to scream out to the world. And this is really what we were when we when we formed Hellhammer. We we all were we came from very poor background. We all had major problems in our upbringing with our parents and so on. We 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 all had a very problematic youth. So we were extremely different from other Swiss people at the time. And maybe that's the reason why we sounded different. There's many bands here and they have phenomenal equipment. They have really expensive equipment and expensive rehearsal rooms and so on and so on. But I don't really I don't really hear any music this that is unusual from them or music that sounds even honest. Uh, most bands are very spoiled and that's why you never hear anything from them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well no, a few minutes ago we spoke about the last one, the last live album like his Requiem. So how do you feel when you see the results of the obtained with the recording of Requiem and Live the Rodborn in 2019? Obviously the album released 2020. So could you tell us what what was behind all that work? Well, the Requiem was going to be a three-part uh, piece when we started in Celtic Frost. And unfortunately, Celtic Frost fell apart before it could be finished. But I really wanted to see it finished. And I always thought one day I will finish it with Trypticon. Uh, I thought it would take much longer, but then Roadburn Festival, who are very close friends to me, approached me with the idea of finishing the Requiem at, at Roadburn. And they said they would support me in any way they can. And of course, I knew this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I agreed. And we, we decided to, to perform it in 2019. So I finished the Requiem for that deadline. <coughs> and Roadburn made it possible to perform it on stage with a, with a phenomenal orchestra and a phenomenal conductor. And there again, I'm very, very grateful to this opportunity. Um, I don't know how I would have finished the Requiem without this, but Roadburn made it possible to do it in, on a very, very high level. And, and Infinitely grateful for that chance. Mm, great, great went well. Regarding the artistic world behind Trypticon, there is there, there is a union with Giger that comes from the Into the Pandemonium album. So there is a link. There is is there a link beyond the the, the taste of the work of with the mass of Giger master for them to have to chose a part of his art perhaps or <coughs> if so which giger work for you do you think will be the next be the part of the of the board for the new record of Trypticon? 
<laughs> well, Giger died in 2014. Yes. And I'm, I was very lucky that Giger approached me while he was still alive and proposed that Tripticon and him do more albums together. So at the time, in uh, 2012 or 2013, we selected the covers for the two next albums. And uh, so the cover for the forthcoming Tripticon album was actually selected by Giger himself still. And it will be the last Giger Tripticon collaboration because I don't want to do anything uh, that Giger himself did not see. But uh, the next cover is finished and it's actually hanging here in my, mm-hmm. in my music room. And the booklet is designed. Uh, and I'm, I'm very lucky that Giger still saw it and gave his approval for it. This is, uh, this is something very important to me. Mm. Oh, great. Well, great, great. So with this, well, well the aspect of the continue the legacy of, um, the legacy of the music, you are a well-known musician. You have a status in the media, in the social, in the well, in 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 general. Your your name is across many seas in the world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, with this aspect. So and and with it, with it also, I read an article about uh, uh, Corey Taylor from the Sleep Not Say that he he will he wants to return to the old era when this more everything concert is, is more 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 awesome more. More, 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 more quick, more cheaper. It's not like the now a big festivals, a lot of long tours. So, are you, if you have the opportunity to come back to the to the old days, are you agree with us, or you are you are has well, you have now the all this you, the new status to be a legend now. Well, of course, um, if I could, I would like to re- return to the early eighties when when heavy metal was in a very revolutionary phase. And it was uh, that the scene rejuvenated itself. It was a very exciting time. Uh, and whether I am famous or not is really not important. Um, I just, I really enjoyed the scene at the time of the new wave of British heavy metal, for example, or when extreme metal was born in the 1980s. Uh, and if I had a choice, of course, I would like to live through that again. But of course, I know. We are where we are. We are in the present, and the present is fine too. I think the heavy metal scene is a very well organized global movement, and I do enjoy that. And we all are connected nowadays with social media, which is also a good thing. So I'm, I know I can never go back to the '80s. It's impossible. So I'm, I'm actually very, very happy with where we are, and and this is completely independent of where I am standing personally with my music. I just think the heavy metal scene is, is at a very good place. There's many good festivals, there's many good bands. And uh, I think it's actually a very healthy scene. Okay. Well, it took you a long time to decide bring back Hellhammer's music. Well, no, with, with a form of tribute, I, we saw the news that you brought in a live presentation, etc. Because you took so long, some opinions talk about the simple economic interest in some times. That's normally for the media. So perhaps it's perhaps it's part of it. Who knows? And but what is the main reason what happened now to bring back this old material, especially in a live edition? Well, this material has always been part of my life. Uh, it was the start of my career, and of course, because of that, it has a certain importance in my life. And my guitar playing is still heavily influenced by by Hellhammer. Everybody who comes to our rehearsal room when I when I pick up my guitar uh, notices that when I play guitar on my own, it still sounds very much like Hellhammer. So it is a part of me whether I want to or not, and, and of course I I'm proud of it. Um, I haven't only brought back Hellhammer's music now. Celtic Frost, both in the nineteen eighties, played some Hellhammer music on stage. And we also tried to play Hellhammer music when we reunited the band. We actually rehearsed a few Hellhammer songs, but Martin and I weren't happy with it because the drummer we had around the time of Monophthys simply did not click with the music and it just didn't sound right. But it, we, we actually had the intention of playing Hellhammer songs on the world tour that we did after, after um, the Monophthys album. 
Moreover, if you listen to my industrial project, the Polyan Sun, which existed from 1986 to 2001, we also did a cover of Hellhammer's Messiah on the album. So Hellhammer's music has been a part of my, my daily life for decades. And as for the economic aspect, that is certainly not the reason why I formed Triumph Death. Um, my, my, my life is Tripticon, and if you, if you want to call it that, Tripticon is basically my day job. Yeah. Uh, I really formed Triumph of Death to have fun, and we are having fun. It's, it's, a, it's a band that doesn't have to promote a new album, that, that doesn't have to create credibility. We're simply going on stage and we play this very punky music and we have immense fun with the audiences experiencing that. But I also have to say something, I don't see, even if I had created Triumph of Death to gain some money from our music, I don't see why this would be wrong, even if this was the case. Because everybody who goes to work, if you're a baker or a gardener or a, a bank manager, you expect to get something for your work. Yeah. You, you don't go to work for free. Yeah. And I don't, I don't understand why a musician should be different. Music is, it can be a very hard job. It takes a lot of work to go on tour. It takes a lot of work to prepare albums and so on. The, the rehearsal hours that you put in are endless. And I don't understand why it should be a sin for a musician to make music, uh, make money with the music he or she wrote over the years. It's the most normal thing in the world. Yes. Well, yeah, that, that is true. That is true. So now I bueno, we will so we 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 saw that you are entirely producing concerts, lives, etc. with Tripticon, Celtic Frost, Hellhammer's Tribute, etc. etc. especially for the Mexico Metal Fest. And now we'll relating with the, this question, how is your expectation about to return to this festival with Tripticon and the tribute Hell's Hammer? Hell's Hammer, because last year you present with Celtic Frogs Cell Set Lease, etc. So how was how was how was the fan expect for the these new two presentations and the new the new edition of Mexico Metal Fest? Um, well, actually, last year I was attending Mexico Metal Fest with Trump of Death, and we played a, a Hellhammer set. Oh yes, and yes, yes, that is true. It was a it was a phenomenal experience. It was a very very professional, well produced festival, and it was a huge pleasure to be invited and to participate. So when we got the offer to play with Triptico and we said yes immediately, I was very, very happy to be asked to return. I have made only the best experiences in, in Montreal at the festival. So this year we were invited to play one concert. One night we play a Triptico concert and the other night we play a Celtic Frost concert. And uh, as I said, I feel very honored that Mexico Metal Fest basically has then featured my entire career from Hellhammer to Celtic Frost to Tripticon. It's not something I would take for granted as a Swiss musician. It's a huge honor and I'm very grateful for it. Great, great to know. Well, we will be a, a great, uh, what, uh, will be a great set list. And, and how do you mix this, your, your new set list for, with Tripticon? Because I'm a huge fan from Tripticon since the first album to now. So how will be the, 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 the set list? You will focus more on the both albums and the Wrecking Album Live or perhaps you will present a little a little new song from the Tripticon. It's possible that we will play a new song, but we haven't really decided yet. Um, we've been given 60 minutes, which is not that much time on stage. Some of Tripticon songs are quite long. Yes. <laughs> but we are trying to put together a set that is takes the best songs from all the albums and uh, songs that we really love, some of our favorite songs, and we hope that really translates to the audience. No, okay, okay. Now, not talking about other kind of aspects in general. So, uh, as you can see now, the Brazilian, uh, the Cavalera brothers, or founders of Sepultura, are re recorded, well, we will, they record again to the more details and well, the first two albums from Sepultura of that era. And now with this aspect, a lot of bands are doing the same thing. We record them the first album, the first era, 80s, 90s, etc. Because at some point they they think that they, at that time the technology did injustice for this for those productions. But now 
Uh, what's your opinion about the whether this aspect that the, the old bands are re-recorded with the new technology, old gems in the metal scene? And perhaps for the future, will will you do something with uh, first album, the first two albums from Celtic Cross re-record again for new tech with the new technology, etc.? I think it's a very legitimate uh, concept. And uh, I really I love the Cavalero brothers, and I think they've done a very good job. Um, but I think as far as Celtic Frost is concerned, I, I don't think we're going to do this. I'm very, very happy with the way Morbid Tales, for example, of the first Celtic Frost album is produced. And I don't think I could do it any better, even with, with uh, nowadays technology. Also, the second album, To Make a Theory On, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. I, I will probably destroy it if I would go and do it. So I think in my case, I think things should be like they are, but I think it's it's absolutely legitimate if an artist wants to revisit their music and see what it sounds like nowadays with, with much better possibilities and more experience. Why not? Mm -hmm. Okay. Talking about on um, other kind of aspects, uh, talking about your work as a as a writer, we we read uh, we have read that the new edition of the that the already out print of Are You Morbid as I'll sell out in some ways. So and perhaps it's coming. So maybe you have some plans to write in something beyond your history with the bands, perhaps develop a universe behind interesting lyrics, behind the Celtic Frost album, Critical albums, or Hellhammer's album. So what are your plans with as a writer? Well, I'm, I'm, the next book I'm going to finish is the, the, the story of Celtic Frost in a much more expanded way, with many more photos and many more details that I have collected over the years. Uh, and I would also like to write a book about the history of Triptychon and Triumph of Death, uh, probably in one book. And beyond that, I think, I think if I live long enough, there's going to be also a book dealing with some of my lyrics, with some explanations behind my lyrics and some artwork to go with it. These are some of the projects that uh, we, we are working on long term. Hmm. Okay. So, well, we're very close to this interview, Tom. And for this aspect, what kind of plans do you have well, for the future in general for Tripticon? Well, the, the, the most urgent and important thing for us is the new album. That's really going to be, even though we're going to play some, some, uh, some shows, but the, the focus must be on the new album. I really, I can rest when the new album is finished and released. So that, that's really going to be the, the whole next year is going to be focused on releasing the new album, finishing the album, releasing it. Everything after that, we'll see. Great. Well, I, I, I'm really, really waiting that for to do my pre-order because I'm a huge fan from Tripticon. So, well, Tom, the sad times arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one like me. A terrific guy. I, 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 I did a lot to learn about your words. I'm a huge fan of Celtic Cross since the beginning also. I, I know you, Carrie, because I'm from the 80s. So I've got all the old CDs from Celtic Cross. I have a lot of attention to your band. So perhaps you want to add something to your Latin American fans, your attempts in Mexico metal, Mexico metal fans, and Metalino followers. Well, if, if I have this opportunity, I would simply say, like to say thank you. Thank you for, for being with me and being with my music for all of these years and for giving me this opportunity and giving me this platform. I never forget why I'm on stage and who put me there, and I'm endlessly grateful for it. 